Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, February 7th, 2019. Uh, let's take a quick look at the charts. We'll start out here with the ES 60-minute uh, chart. These are the S&P 500 E-mini futures, and um, you can see we have follow-through so far to yesterday's breakdown. So I'm referring to these smaller wedges right here. Uh, you know, you had the large wedge back here breakdown that gave us that, uh, you know, a couple weeks of sideways trading. And then we set up in this smaller wedge. We went a little bit uh, above those highs, broke above that range, wedged up. You can see nice, clean, small wedge broke down yesterday, giving us a sell signal on the um, U.S. markets. And so far, uh, that signal is confirmed today with additional impulsive selling to the downside. Uh, now, we have hit, uh, just recently hit uh, support. You can see the lines on this chart. Let me zoom in a little bit for you here. Uh, so what we have here is uh, this is the measured target uh, for the wedge. You just take the I use the simplest um, formula and um, that's uh, taking the widest part of the wedge, add it to where the wedge breaks down, and that gives you your measured target. It's an approximation. So we we overshot the measured target, which was also a little bit of support there too. You can see. Uh, come back in, we have a lot of reactions. I could probably add a support line right there. And we're actually back testing that now from below. Um, we also hit, uh, you can see 27.10.35, and this is, I'll, I'll say right now, is probably a, a max bounce target. I'm leaning towards uh, this bounce capping right here as I'm doing the video. We're about 20, you know, call it 2,700 or so. Uh, I think the bounce will be shallow. Uh, and I'll share my logic into that or my reasoning. Um, this market for months now, going back to the highs in October, has been pretty much uh, all or none one way or the other. In other words, it seems like a very crowded boat. Everybody shifts from one side. They're all, all the passengers are on one side of the boat. Let's say that's short or, you know, in sell mode and they're on their longs. And then all of a sudden, like, for example, December 26, everyone ran to the other side of the boat and it's been just a pretty much nonstop uptrend. We did have a period of a few weeks of sideways consolidation. Um, but that's been the signature of this market lately. So, um, you know, uh, we're, we're, you know, pushing the upper limits of you know bound my bounce targets and, and key resistance levels everything I've talked about on the daily and weekly charts uh, uh, so I you know I still maintain that the upside is very limited from here in the near term um, you know, most of the meat on the bone has been taken off the rally off the uh, December 26 lows so you know although we haven't um, we haven't dropped in weeks now. Uh, we haven't really gone up much either. We, you know, we've gone up a few percentage points since, uh, and even what is that? Just a couple of percentage points since we broke above this multi-week trading range. All right. So again, let's talk about uh, where we might be going. So therefore, you know, if the tide has shifted. And again, it's long overdue. I think even the most ardent bulls right now know that we need a correction to be healthy. So I think most market participants are probably on the same page right now, um, you know, that uh, we're going to at least have a pullback. Now, the big question is, how far does that pullback go? Are we going to retest the uh, the lows from December 24th or not in the coming months? Or will we come back to make a, a lower low and then continue on higher and take out the recent highs? Uh, I've shared my thoughts before. Let's just focus right now on the long term. Uh, so again, textbook break down back test and so far moving lower uh, we're right now about 2700 is the first resistance uh, and I suspect that will probably cap this bounce that we've had intraday right now and uh, so therefore that's another objecting shorting up if you if you missed yesterday or today or you want to add on uh, at most my expectation right now would be a bounce to, to 2710 and uh, if we get there I can tell you it's objective I can't promise we stop there um, but if we do get up there to 2710 I think that's a very objective level. All right, so a couple other things on the chart to note. Uh, for a while, I've been focusing on uh, one of my favorite trend indicators, very simple and effective, the PPO signal line, which is the 9 EMA on a PPO. Uh, if you don't have a PPO, you can use a MACD. And uh, typically when that uh, signal line, which in this case is the uh, orange line here, uh, is above zero, uh, the trend is bullish. And when it's below zero, the trend is bearish. So most of the time, throughout most of the rally here, it's been above the zero line, as you can see. And throughout most of the plunge down into the lows, it was below. And so and nothing's perfect. And I always say this, do not use trend indicators uh, during choppy sideways periods of consolidation. You'll get whipsaw signals. Now I'll say this, you don't know the first time you have that signal trigger, you don't know if that's going to prove to be. And I'll tell you, they got me there. I really thought that breakdown would have more teeth, uh, more downside to it. It was 
were pretty clean, uh, but we ended up trading sideways. It triggered, you know, the PPO fell down below zero, but what happened? We put in the small divergent low afterwards and again, so that's what happens. Sometimes uh, you get a, a, a nice correction. In this case, it corrected uh, more so in time than price, but again, we've talked about all that in the past, so let's let's go back to where we are today. Uh, now what I can see is the, you know, PPO and the signal, including the signal line is, is well below the zero line right now, and for the most part, still pointing down right now and uh, again that comes after just a string of divergences so although we haven't had a decent correction now for a while in price um, nothing has changed in the technicals and so you know, I'll give an example. There was a couple of trade. I added back a trade today on the site. Uh, we recently had a stop clipped on KRE today with that merger news. Added that trade back. And I want to say this. In my opinion, there is a, a fine but distinct line between stubbornness and tenacity. Uh, tenacity is I will stay on a trade. I will stay on a stock and continue to go long or short that. I'll keep, you know, manage my money, if I, you know, my, my, my risk. If I get stopped out, I'll get stopped out. But then if I get another buy signal, for example, you know, on, on the markets, we'll just use this example or KRE today. If I have a, it can still make a clearly bullish or bearish case. Uh, and there's an objective entry, then I'll just go right back into that trade. And um, so, you know, with the as far as the short trades go, for those who've been shorting the markets, I just want to say that that uh, doesn't mean that technical analysis no longer works when you know wedges don't play out to their measured targets or any other chart pattern for that matter. Um, but uh, if a trade uh, or the markets, if it still looks good, if I can still make a, a clearly bullish or bearish case, then I will stick with it. And uh, despite the fact that it doesn't work out uh, or might not have been working out for the last couple of weeks. So that's where we're at. And so we're really, you know, my thought process is, you know, we went, we, we had divergences and a lot of, you know, some potential sell signals here and some, a lot of overhead resistance. We just started hitting most of the thick overhead resistance in the, in the markets on the daily charts back here. And we've only gone a little bit thicker into that resistance. So to me, it just means at this point in time, simply the correction, the same targets I were looking for, was looking for before uh, will be hit. And it's just going to be a bigger drop now in the coming weeks is what I suspect uh, on this chart. And let's get off this one. And we'll go over to NQ and then look at SPY and QQQ. I can just tell you right now, at minimum, uh, that's my minimum target at this point in time. 2626, uh, pretty very well defined. Uh, support level. It's also the bottom of that, uh, mo you know, one or two week sideways trading range there. And there's some uh, resistance back then. So watch it. And it's a pretty key level. So if you get there, at the very least, I'd expect a reaction off there. Um, but if it goes, it could open the door uh, for a move down to, uh, we'll call it my final swing target at this point in time. Uh, at this point in time, that doesn't mean that I, you know, if we start to get there, I may not extend and look for an undercut of the lows. But it, uh, I think. I think this would be a, a really uh, an ideal swing target if this correction, if we start to get a correction with teeth. I shouldn't even get ahead of myself. Today is just one down day. I think we were down a little bit yesterday, but uh, uh, so that's that. So those are, let's just say right now, preferred target here and uh, potential target. And that's the easy way to put it. All right, let's jump over to NQ real quick. NQ, similar story, obviously, you know, the indexes trade in line um, for the most part. So there's your smaller wedge right there. Uh, you had a little divergence there, was popped through. We put in an equal high. The divergence stayed intact. I should I have a, I should have that's a equal highs and uh, you can have negative divergence. You don't have to have prices going up and, and the indicators going down as long as you have uh, at least equal highs, as long as you don't take out that previous high. Uh, so in this case, we have the indicators making equal highs, or only the RSI, I should say. We still had clean negative divergence on the PPO, and price is making a higher high. And so there it is. Broke down yesterday, moved down. This is the measured target right here, this little white line. You can see if I can grab it, uh, if the system will let me grab it. Uh, I already botched it. Either way, that's just the widest part of the wedge yeah, added to where it broke down. So we pretty much hit that. And you can see here as well, there's some uh, price support 
where the market has uh, where this uh, the correction today or the drop today so far has stalled out at a logical support level. You can see the reactions back there quite a bit. So it's minor support, and as I told you on SPY, um, you know best I see a mild kickback rally, maybe carry a size 20. Uh, what is that 69.28, and then come on down, and I think then we'll get a reaction right here. You have two key reactions there and uh my lines are a mess they're overlapping each other let's move that one that's around 6807 and then um you know similar levels i won't go through each and every level right now um, but let's just say that's near term what i'm looking for and again if we can get continue to build on these losses over the next few days here and, and start to really have the makings of a uh, a pretty clear downtrend i think you'll start to see more people shift over to that side of the boat and I think this thing can pick up either pick up momentum to the downside or at least have a pretty consistent downtrend that we can you know swing trade so um, I guess one of the takeaways from that is maybe be open to you know letting a trade run uh, you have listed some near-term targets the market has been resilient maybe the buyers are going to step in at one of these targets maybe they'll step in where we are today today is the first support level and then take it on up uh, and take out the recent highs I don't think that'll happen uh, but it's certainly possible. So, um, you know, you trade it as you like. You can book quick profits or you can just trail, uh, you know, a stop down and, and allow for a potential runner trade in case we come on down. There could easily be six, seven, eight percent downside in this market, possibly even more uh, before we take out these highs. Okay, 60-minute charts of the index ETS SPY. Um, we'll keep this one pretty simple. Uh, this is a clean, nice, clean pattern. Uh, you have an uptrend line off the lows on the 24th, uh, terminating in a wedge-type pattern, uh, been diverging for a while. We had divergence at this point, and we had a correction. Again, there was that sideways in time correction, more so in price. Um, we broke down yesterday, and you can see we followed through today. This is a clear, unmistakable breakdown. Uh, will it play out to the measure target? I think so. Uh, there's no reason to suspect that it won't just because uh, the market was resilient a couple weeks ago. Uh, the only thing different now is that we're just more overbought than we were back then, and we have more bullish sentiment, more, you know, the boat's tipping over as far as that goes. Sentiment just peaked out at a pretty high, pretty high reading. Somebody in the trading room posted that today. Um, measure target right here, take the widest part of the wedge, uh, which is right here, add that to where the wedge breaks down, and it couldn't get much better than that. It comes in right at this target, about 261.28, very well-defined uh, support. Uh, it goes back and it aligns with the target I just showed you on ES. So to try to quantify it for you guys, uh, from where we are right now as I'm doing this video, 269.53, that would give us about, um, you know, another 3% downside in the S&P 500. And uh, QQQ, let me make sure I get the right board here because we have an active short trade on that right now on the site. Okay, this one is it. So I can't show you the specific price targets. Members can access that. Oh, and by the way, guys, I may be opening uh, the site up to new registrations uh, as early as next week. I will communicate for those of you that are on the email list. There's a, a mailing list to get updates. I know you haven't received anything because I don't have any firm information, but I'll, I'll send something out as soon as I do. All right, uh, QQQ, uh, same story here. You know, you can see, uh, although actually not the same story. Spy broke down. Here's the trend line off the lows on the 24th. So uh, QQQ hit that today. So it's not just mere random coincidence. The market stopped at where they did at the lows today. You have a trend line off the lows from December 24th, a couple of reactions there, and now a reaction there because we hit it and so far we reverse. So that gives it that third reaction and uh, now that will trigger the next sell signal. Uh, so again, I already gave you some potential bounce targets. Maybe we backfill this gap, um, but I think the bounce will be minimal. Uh, but if not, then this wedge can continue to grow a little bit and we can maybe make another thrust up and then watch this. Watch this trend line for a break. That would give us our next sell signal. Uh, you can see some potential, you know, sub key support levels. We'll call them potential targets. They're not exact targets. About 161. And that's where I think we work our way down to that 161-ish level eventually. And again, it depends where this breaks down. So let's assume we break down here. If we broke down here, what's interesting is we back, we come in for a back test. Here's a trend line. Let me change colors here. Let that stand out and uh, show you what that looks like. Let's take it out to a two-hour period chart. So here's a trend line off the highs back in early October. 
we came in, we broke out, back tested it here, and so there's a, a potential pullback target for you as well. So we'll call it 161 down, maybe a back test of that trend line. There's your negative divergence, everything else you like to see. So uh, we need a little more work. Um, keep it simple. Let's see, we need to take out today's lows with conviction on QQQ to take out this uh, uptrend line. Yeah, that's about it. Let's wrap it up here. Uh, we'll keep this one um, as public contents, general market analysis. Um, members of the site, I'll do an update um, on that uh, TVIX trade. Uh, I'm not sure if we broke out of that falling wedge yet. I'll take a look at that. And um, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an update here. But right now, uh, everything looks good. So at best, I see a little, little counter trend bounce coming up here. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and uh, if anything changes, I'll, I'll post an update. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, a thumbs up on the YouTube channel is greatly appreciated. And again, I will communicate any details uh, about uh, opening the site for new registrations as soon as I have those, uh, you know, as soon as everything's finalized. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Thank you.